Welcome to the Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon and I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. In previous videos we explored the integration of battery backup into a solar electric system including how to size a battery bank as well as the charge controller that will effectively regulate the electricity coming from the solar array. And you can review those videos for more information, but in today's video, we'll take a closer look at how to wire the battery bank and the charge controller into the system. And we'll start today's discussion by revisiting some of the basic concepts related to battery banks, including the system voltage and wiring configuration. As you probably remember, most off-grid battery banks are either 12, 24, or 48 volts. 12 volt systems are generally used with smaller maximum demands, while 24 and 48 volt systems provide the widest options. With that said, the simple examples that we'll consider in today's video will primarily involve the use of 12 volt battery banks. Now in terms of battery configurations, we'll start by considering a series configuration. In working with this 12 volt system, for example, we could wire two 6 volt batteries in series and that's because voltage adds up in a series configuration. And in this case, we could simply run a battery cable between the negative post of the first battery to the positive post of the second battery. The remaining positive and negative posts could then be connected to the charge controller or inverter. Parallel connections, on the other hand, will maintain the same voltage level. Building onto this same example, we could integrate another series of 6 volt batteries just like before. So now we have two series of batteries, each being 12 volts. But we could now connect these two series in parallel by connecting a battery cable between the negative posts of the first two batteries and another cable between the positive post of the other batteries. We'll then connect this positive post and this negative post to the charge controller or inverter in order to maintain a 12 volt system since parallel configurations increase the electrical current while the voltage remains unchanged. Now these have been some rather simple examples, but let's consider where some problems could arise if any of the batteries were to be improperly connected. If, for instance, the charge controller or inverter were attached only to the positive and negative of a single battery in this series, the excessive load imposed on that battery would damage or wear it out. Even if the wiring was corrected at a later point in time, any damage to that battery would still impact the performance of the entire series of batteries, dropping the series to that new lowest battery range. This could also prevent the charge controller or the inverter from starting properly, which again demonstrates the importance of proper connections where the master positive and negative of this series would provide the full power. Now that we've reviewed some battery basics, we'll wire a simple battery integrated system as reflected in the following diagram. As you can see, we have two solar panels wired in parallel connected to a charge controller, connected to a breaker box, then connected to a battery. We'll also connect a small DC load to this charge controller and you can see that each positive wire is protected by a fuse. Now, we'll start by connecting the charge controller to this 12 volt lead acid battery. And as we've done previously, we'll use a red wire for the positive and a black wire for the negative. Now, you'll need to ensure a good connection at each terminal, particularly if any of the wires are frayed or deformed. In this case, we'll insert the end of our negative wire into this end sleeve, squeeze it with a hydraulic crimper, and then apply heat shrink over the connection. We'll then insert this end sleeve into the negative battery terminal on the charge controller and tighten the terminal screw. We'll repeat this process for the positive wire using an end sleeve if necessary. And once again, we'll insert the end sleeve into the proper terminal, in this case the positive battery terminal, and then tighten its terminal screw. Now that our positive and negative wires are connected to the charge controller, we'll run them to the battery, but we'll fuse the positive line to protect the system. We could do this with either an inline fuse or with a breaker box like we have here. And so in this case, we'll run both wires over to the breaker box. And we'll cut each wire to its proper length and strip the ends. Again, the positive wire will be connected to a breaker using an end sleeve if necessary. And we'll just continue this positive line on the other side of the breaker. So we'll connect this red cable to the terminal on the other side of this breaker, while the negative wire coming from the charge controller simply passes through the breaker box. Now, with the battery disconnect open, we'll connect these positive and negative wires from the charge controller to the actual battery. First, we'll ensure that we have the proper length for each wire, and then we'll strip the end of each wire, crimp on a quarter inch wire lug, and heat shrink them to ensure solid and safe connection. Now we can connect the negative wire to the negative battery post and the positive wire to the positive battery post. And for these battery posts, we'll simply tighten the bolts and washers back into place. Now, we've completed the wiring between the charge controller and the battery, but before we close this disconnect switch, we'll set the proper charging parameters on the charge controller. Just note these settings that you select will be based on your system design and the specific components that you're using. 
With that said, the dip switch block on this particular charge controller can be set for various operating parameters including battery type selection, system voltage, and equalization. Just be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for your own particular battery and charge controller. Now, once the disconnect switch is closed, we should see a light indicating power from the battery, and we can verify the proper voltage going to the battery terminals of the charge controller, and for a 12 volt system like this, we can expect it to be in the range of 10 to 14.6 volts, so with 11.75 volts, we have sufficient voltage. We can also switch the lead and dial of this multimeter or use an ammeter to measure the electrical current or amperage going through the wire like we've done in previous videos. In this case, we have about 0.2 amps. So the charge controller has been effectively connected to the battery. You may want to review our video on multimeters if you need additional information on taking any of these measurements. Now this charge controller is also equipped with DC load terminals which can provide power to small DC loads like this 12 volt motor which has an amp rating of just under 1 amp. With that said, a DC to AC inverter cannot be connected to this load terminal because its high amperage would damage the load control circuit. We'll explore how to connect a DC to AC inverter directly to the battery in another video later on, but in today's video we'll simply connect this small DC motor to the load terminals of the charge controller. And to do this, we'll strip the end of a positive and a negative wire, crimp on a quick disconnect terminal onto each wire, and apply heat shrink. These wires will be connected to the corresponding positive and negative terminals of the DC motor. Now that our positive and negative wires are connected to the DC motor, we'll run each wire towards the charge controller. And again, we'll fuse the positive line in the same breaker box that we used earlier. Just like before, we'll connect the positive wire to a breaker while the negative wire will simply run through. We'll just need to continue that positive line on the other side of the breaker. Now, we can open the breakers and verify that there's no voltage going through the circuit, then we can connect the positive and negative wires to the load terminals just like we did with the battery terminal. The motor should be powered on when the fuse or the breaker is closed, and the charge controller will cut this auxiliary output if the battery voltage drops below the set point. Now, in today's video, our 12-volt system will be powered by two of these 100-watt solar panels running to a single charge controller. You may need multiple charge controllers, however, if your solar array exceeds the maximum parameters of a single charge controller, or if your solar array consists of drastically different panel sizes. But again, a single 30 amp charge controller like this one will suffice in today's uh, uh, example with this simple system that we're setting up. While MC4 connections are fairly straightforward, you may want to double check their polarity before you connect your solar panels. You can review our previous video addressing the polarity of these leads, but if you recall, the positive leads typically have the male MC4 housing, while the negative leads have the female MC4 housing. Once we've confirmed the polarity of these leads, we can connect the panels in parallel and then fuse the positive leads. And if you recall from some of our previous videos, we could prepare a PV extension cable with inline fuses or we could run the leads into a combiner box. In this case, we'll connect the positive and negative wire from each solar panel into its corresponding terminal on the combiner box. And with all of the fuses, breakers, and connections already made within this box, we can see that each positive lead has been fused. In this case, we're using 12 amp fuses for both of the positive leads, but you may want to review our video on fuse sizing for more information. Now, remember, solar panels will produce current whenever they're exposed to sunlight. So we'll want to leave the solar disconnect open or in the off position before we connect any of the positive or negative outputs to the charge controller. With that said, we can still verify the proper voltage and polarity at the incoming terminals of the solar disconnect breakers. And in this case, we're reading almost 21 volts coming from the solar array, which is expected under the present conditions. And with this main breaker still left open, we can safely run the output wires to the charge controller. We'll cut each wire to length and strip the ends, and if necessary, you can crimp on some end sleeves to ensure a good connection. And then we'll apply heat shrink over those connections using red for positive and black for negative. Then we'll insert each wire into its corresponding disconnect breaker inside the combiner box, and we'll tighten the terminal screws. We'll prepare the other end of each wire in a similar fashion before sliding the negative wire into the negative PV terminal on the charge controller and the positive wire into the positive PV terminal. We'll then tighten both terminal screws on the charge controller. While this completes the positive and negative wiring that's required for this simple system, we'll cover other important factors in subsequent videos, including the equally important equipment grounding. But for now, we'll connect the solar array to the charge controller by flipping the solar disconnect breakers. And then we'll make sure that the power coming from the solar panels is in fact going through the solar charge controller and into the battery.
and you can confirm the expected voltage and current on either side of the charge controller, which will just be a factor of the type of controller that you're using, the current weather conditions that you have, and the rest of the system design. And with the solar panels effectively charging, the battery will replace the covers on the combiner box, charge controller, and breaker box. And that's our basic system, minus the equipment grounding that we'll explore in a later video. Well, I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how to wire a battery bank and a solar charge controller. In upcoming videos, we'll consider other aspects of solar electric systems, including the integration of DC to AC inverters like this one, uh, as well as proper electrical grounding. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of the Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar photovoltaics and other energy-related topics.